Cop hunts down 16 year old mass killer, man. I hope he gets, you know what I'm saying? I hope he gets got, you feel me? Because there's no way he's 16 thinking of this mass murder nonsense, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? So, what's the chance? We're trying to get 2K for my B day, June 20th, but I don't know what to expect. I can't lie. Okay, that's the shooter. Did he just, just gangbang? He just, he just gangbang on me, chat. Nobody got hurt. Quiet afternoon at the Clovis Carver Public Library he is destroyed the when the pulverizing sounds of gunfire ring out through the bookshelves. In an instant, an ordinary day for dozens of people is twisted into a terrifying so encounter in with horrifying violence. Police must face that grim threat themselves if they're to stop a deranged teenager driven to kill by an incomprehensible motive. Six. You wanna do the wrong while you got the gun in your hand? You think they dumb? You think they trying to get shot? On the afternoon of August 28th, 2017, a lone figure dressed in black walks up to the front doors of the public library in Clovis, New Mexico. Instead of going directly into the library, the young man circles back to use the restroom. His movements are quiet for now, but he had much to say only minutes earlier when he recorded an ominous message before leaving his house. Okay, so this him leaving before he leaves. By the time you're watching this, the deed would have already been done. And by the deed, I'm not sure what it is yet. I'm just gonna go. Try you along, find something to do. First off, I'm gonna say I'm sorry to anyone that's gonna be affected by this. This is a tough subject. I want to say I'm sorry to my family. I know. Just remember happier times. <laughs> Yo, is he lacing up to do damage? Yo, he lacing. Man, you could be lacing up like you lacing up like you finna go to a basketball game. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> I'm doing my do. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna score about 30. <laughs> you feel me? You about to kill. I'm sorry to my girlfriend. I wanted to marry you. And I love you a lot. I just couldn't take him. I, this was all my idea. No one made me do this. No one made me want to do this. It was, just, it was just me being mad. So I don't want my family to be punished in any sort of way. The young man says more in his pre-recorded manifestos, and we'll hear his disturbing message soon. Wow, his girlfriend now, broke his heart. In moments before he unleashes his cruel violence, he takes a final picture for Snapchat. Oh, you snapping up to the ground? Water. And the little kid coming out the bathroom, bro. Don't do no wild stuff, man. Yeah, he banging. The final seconds before Nathaniel opens fire are almost ominous in their normalcy. Please be advised that the following footage is highly intense. Okay. However, the CCTV footage does not show anyone being physically harmed or injured. You see the little kids doing their thing? I think he I think he got the knife. I think he um took out his knife. He finna go stab something. Uh oh, he he made sure something. He pulled out something though. Hold on. I thought he was gonna pull out the strap though. That door Rick? Oh, he put out like a knife. Come on, come on. Come on, girl. Lucky few are able to escape through a side door, and one heroic woman is careful to make sure she rescues an oblivious bystander before getting as far away from the library as possible. But back inside the library, many are still trapped in a living hell. 
why he's still shooting, man. But who is he shooting at? A family hiding behind the information desk decides they can no longer wait for that's this that's nightmare to be over. <laughs> bro, why, bro? Why he just hold that kid leg like that? The little kid like, no, you're not, you're not leaving me. You're not leaving me. He grabbed, he yanked that little kid leg like, nah. That's crazy. Desk decides they can no longer wait for this nightmare. Well, that a grown lady doing that. Sorry, the one. Oh, come here. Where you going? That's a grown lady. In response to the screams for help. A man outside calls 911 as he walks into the library to rescue his wife and child trapped inside. I'm at the library, somebody's requesting the shooting. He walking there like he already knows up. There's two people laying dead up. Oh! I thought he said he wasn't going. I didn't know he was going to really shoot somebody. I didn't know he was going to kill somebody. I thought he didn't kill nobody. He killed two people? He was really shooting people. Oh, I did not know that. I did not know that, chat. What up, Bree? The scene playing out at the Clovis Carver Public Library is unimaginable in its terror and that, carnage. Chad. But help is on the way. Even as the shooter paces from room to room, stalking his victims like prey, police are descending on the building. Oh, he really... Once the police are inside, the dreaded unknown lurks around every corner and behind every door. No one in the library is beyond suspicion. Put the phone down and lay down. Lay down. Put your hands up and see him. We got two. And they're taking no chances. I'm going in. Go. Ah! Ah! Hey, 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 hey. Who is screaming? You hopping out the, the, the you open the door screaming? Yeah, it's a you trying to get blasted, Come here. bro. Come here, show me your hands. Show me your hands. Come on. Come on, let's Come go. On. Let's go. Come on. Out, 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 hey. out. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah. Get in. Right over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I got Charles back. Secure the door. 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 Secure the it's an unusual sight to see white police guy. handcuffing potential victims, but at this point, they have very little to go on. Oh. With that in mind, an officer asked two witnesses who provide critical information. Guy on the ground. He's a white skinny guy. Like him. No, no. He was skinny. He was no. See, look. That's why I said he's a white skinny guy. That's the only thing he had to add to make the detail more. Just say he's a white skinny or a big. If he was big, a white big dude, like fat dude, like. Okay. 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 Weight matters. Okay. Come look at his face. Wait, wait, wait. Come over this way. Come, on. Come here. Come here. Come look. Hurry. Is that him? Yes, sir. Okay. I believe it okay, is. Okay, you'll go. Just, just wait right over there. We got it. Okay. 
It's a shock. It's a fire. Don't touch it. Why? We're going to clear it. That way, I think. The shooter is handcuffed and lying on the floor beside the information desk. Shortly before police arrived, he walked up to Lupe Aguirre, the man who called 911, with a little smile and told him to hang up the phone. Aguirre told the young man that the cops were right behind him, at which point the shooter walked back to the library's main room to surrender. So did he, did he, did he, did he shoot Lupe? Did he shoot Lupe? And who called 911 okay. with a little smile and told him to hang up the phone. Again. Okay, what happened after that? Today told the young man that the cops were right behind him, at which point the shooter walked back to the library's main room to surrender. Oh, nah, he ain't shoot Lupe. He ain't shoot Lupe, chat. He ain't shoot Lupe. So Lupe really saved the day. Lupe really got his story, chat. Lupe came back in there to save his wife. And he saved everybody. Hey, shout out to Lupe. Lupe, the main character. Less than five MC. minutes passed between the opening gunfire and the shooter's capture, but it's been long enough to create a tragic and chaotic scene. Police at the rear of the building still don't know if they have the right guy in custody or if he's the only one at large. Excuse me, sir. Are you here with somebody? My wife. Okay, if I can, let me get you on the other side of the street for now, all right? Let me see your hands. Get on the other side of the street. Okay, why don't you maintain a position there at the dumpster, make sure nobody's coming around the building or outside on that side where they're not going to be coming behind me. Also, keep a visual just around the area. As officers outside work to keep the building secure, Man, police inside the no library fire. struggle to get a handle on the nerve-wracking situation still in progress. Well, he's seen everything. That little kid seen everything. He ain't duck. He ain't, he ain't hide. He was just standing right there. Just looking. Yeah, he might be scarred, chat. Yeah, for sure that. That's crazy. Which door? Excuse me. I need you guys to go ahead and cross the street, get on the other side of that police unit. Just be careful with the traffic, okay? Get on the other side of that, that police unit, use that car for cover. Back inside. Officers are still exercising extreme caution. Why would you tell them that? Anybody else? How many? He ain't like that dude still shooting. We got one that way. That's what I was going to do. Let's go. I'm going to look left. I'm going to look left, okay? Traffic on me. Stay down. Keep your hands out where I can see him, okay? As police carefully sweep the library, ideas about a second shooter begin to fade. We still looking for one? No, we have one. There's not two. Only one individual has caused this carnage. He'll do plenty of talking before the day is through, and much of what he says will be appalling in light of this shocking crisis. Yes, we gotta know, did, did you catch... Did you in the meantime, it. there are still many aspects of this emergency to contain. They say you caught two bodies, though. First responders must sweep the entire library, get the shooter to the police station, and most importantly, tend to the victims. The woman being led out of the back closet is Jessica Thrawn, an assistant librarian who has been shot in the shoulder. Jessica is married to an officer on the force. Oh, yeah, he getting towed up. Is he? Yeah. Is that right? 
tourniquet on it in the arm, which is fine right now. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, tourniquet on it. A word fine may not be the most accurate way to describe Jessica's status, but it is true that when all is said and done, she is among the lucky ones. Well, this, this is my office. The, that door is locked from the outside, and no one came in through here. Okay. All right. I, I know you still need a check. We're right. good. We're good. We're good. We're clear back here. Can you ID her for me? That's Wanda Walters. Okay, Wanda Walters. Taking them out. It's Christy. Christy's our Christy. Christina Carter. Well, Children's librarian Christina Carter and circulation assistant Wanda Walters are among the less fortunate victims that day, killed in this senseless violence. As the officers... Uh, that's the creative hyping them, the lady that was in the beginning of the video. They found Loretta. Who is Loretta? Continue to rummage through the library. The number of victims in that's desperate need of their there. assistance continues to pile up. I have an elderly male, GS taken to his left arm, all juvenile, GS taken to his bed. Hey, go over a little bit and get off the door. I have a 21, a couple of you, elderly male with a gunshot wound to the arm, can you turn on the rest? Juvenile male, GS taken to left hand. The boy being carried out is 10-year-old Noah Molina, who visited the restroom at the same time as the suspect in the chilling moments before he and his big sister were shot. He was in a bathroom with the killer and he didn't even know. Bro, that's crazy. These gut-wrenching scenes have some officers discussing what they may have done differently. I was telling you when he came through the door. I didn't know it was him. Yeah, yeah I got it. Yeah, Honestly, yeah I already dropped it. I smoke checked that Police decided. Damn. They ain't capping. And I think that's his wife. His wife was on the force too that day, yeah. He is not lying. It's time to remove the killer from the crime scene. Is that our suspect? Hefty. Is that our suspect? That's our suspect. Get him out. Get him out. Get him out. Right. Where'd you find him? He was. He had his hands up by that information post. The police drag the young suspect into the front lawn of the library and hand him off for transport. I have my unit back over here. Yes. I'm trying to be all my time. My pants are falling. Can I pick him up? Nope. Keep your hands where I can see him. There's a nice pocket back over here. Get down on your knees. Get down on your knees. What else do we have in your pockets? Um, I'm not sure. I think that's my chart. Oh, it's pepper. The shooter is oddly calm in the wake of this incident. You know why he's calm? Because he heard you say that you would smoke him if he had a gun. He's going to act calm because he don't want to do the slightest thing. So you can throw him around, bust his lip, or give him a black eye on accident. But police won't be lulled into a false sense of security. He's playing the smart. Even with the suspect in handcuffs. They are thorough. I ain't got nothing I'm not gonna trust you. Oh. Got it for a sec. My wallet. I need to get a unit to this location and block this street off. Okay. Wanna take a seat? The shooter is driven to the police station, but the main concentration of law enforcement is still here at the devastating crime scene. It is 45. There's some 380 shell casings over here. Yep. And then there's another pistol in there. Officers have found two guns at the scene, and as we've seen, they were put to appalling use inside the library. At the station, police identify the young man behind this dreadful mayhem. So you understand your right to remain silent? Yeah. What is your name? Nathaniel G. Uh, Nathaniel G. I go by Nathan. The rest of the, uh, Do you have an ID on you? Well, the no. Is he going to be in your wallet? I'm going to the scene. I don't have an ID. One can only wonder what drove a teenager yeah, two years shy right. of adulthood to commit such a disgusting act of brutality. Nathaniel Jewett will provide some answers, but his twisted reasons are unlikely to provide much comfort. Let's try not to move around so much, bro. Just for your safety and for mine, okay? Um, I don't want to have to hurt you, bro. Um, I'm not here to interview you, okay? That's not what I'm here for, okay? But I'm pretty sure that I would appreciate uh, you talking. Okay. If those cuffs on your ankles get too tight, let me know. I'll loosen them if it's going to put your feet to sleep or something like that. Okay? Where are you? You're at the Clovis Police Department. Sir, you're not injured in any way? Do you need to see the medics or anything? I don't think so. My ears 
Your ears hurt? I can't hear out of my if, Okay. If you feel that you huh? need to see the medics, I want Cause you were shooting a gun in the library multiple times with no earphones. Maybe that's the reason. I want you to tell me, okay? Close police department. Are you under the influence of something? Are you under the influence of something? No. It's natural that the officer would wonder about Nathaniel's sobriety after answering the same question twice in five minutes. But that's far from the strangest thing the young killer will say in police custody. I'm church tonight at six. Or I have to get there at six. We're installing the soundboard today. He's fully aware of where he's headed for the evening, but in a fickle attempt at a mind game. Nathaniel tries to downplay the violent act he carried out that morning. Nobody got hurt, right? Um, so I don't know all the details that's going on, all right? But I do believe there are wounded people. Whether Nathaniel really believed at this moment that the only casualty of his shooting spree was his own hearing, we cannot know. Yeah, what we do like know is that even high-ranking law enforcement officials are aghast at the horrors that have visited their town. So how many injured people? Oh, God, there's multiple. Multiple There's blood all over the floor, trails. Okay, so shells everywhere. Seven boots, hands around. Hey, gentlemen. Lieutenant Cope, I can hear everything where you guys are saying. The officer is concerned about Nathaniel overhearing the chatter, but it seems the young shooter has more important things on his mind. Did I have a jacket? Not when uh, you got with me, you didn't. Okay. It was a hat. It wasn't a jacket. That's what it was. I had a hat on. Nathaniel may be somewhat indifferent to the weight of his actions, but it's soon clear that this day has taken an emotional toll not only on the victims, but on the police as well. Hey, baby girl. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. No, I'm good, ladies. I'm safe. Okay. Um, love you girls so much. I'll talk to you about you girls after a bit, but I'm I'm safe. I'm good. Everything is good. Okay. I'll talk to you in a bit. Okay. Love you so much. Okay. Bye bye. As for the killer, there are many moments over the next couple of hours that highlight his disturbed mind and his complete lack of remorse for his actions. Any, any bruises, any cuts on your face? Is that, was that marker or what? Yeah, my girlfriend. Okay. So that's all marker, it's all right on you? Okay. She drilled my stomach too. <laughs> okay. You know, you know something, I don't care. Right, pick, up, pick, up, pick up your shirt. Do you work? Uh, no, sir. Student? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Teeth didn't work. Okay. The police take Nathaniel to the hospital, where he will answer some questions before heading to his ultimate destination, the juvenile detention center. He tells the nurses about his substance abuse issues which are extensive enough to surprise even the experienced healthcare workers. Do you drink or smoke? Um, I drink. How much? Daily? Do you drink daily? I drink. Okay, let's drink. Just create spots with you, okay? Like beer, like three, three beers, a couple of shots. Uh, tequila. And do you smoke? Um, weed. Any other drugs? Uh, what do you take those for? You just take those to take them? Recreation. Oh. When asked about his mental health, Nathaniel tells them that he's been diagnosed with depression, but recently made the unfortunate decision to quit counseling. In a lawsuit two years later, the victims will accuse the psychiatrist who treated Nathaniel of failing to act, despite knowing about his violent mindset and his access to firearms. Minutes after the shooting, Nathaniel's father arrived at home to find his son missing. His absence was cause for concern, but it wasn't until Chris Jewett noticed a unique item in his son's room that his concern turned into alarm. And I went and looked in his room and found a couple more pocket knives and razor blades, and then I 
really got my attention was there was a two dollar bill on his desk and I have two dollar bills in my gun safe and I was thinking and I just just went to go look I was it was one of those I kind of got just that funky feeling you know I went to the gun safe and noticed that both my semi-automatic pistols were missing do you remember how many times you shot once or twice what did you feel when you walked over there I don't know. I, I remember being in the bathroom and then going out. I, I got mad when I pulled the trigger and I, I think I hit someone. And then the alarms went off and the cop showed up. That was it. Did you say anything? I think I yelled. What did you yell? I don't know. I was mad. Yep. I heard someone. <laughs> did you hurt someone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You hurt several people. Nathaniel is apparently yeah, having sudden amnesia people. about what happened at the library and he is quick to blame others. I've been getting picked on and beat up. Everyone hates me. I'm just mad about that. Did you tell anybody how you were feeling? No. Why not? Everyone got their own problems. Nathaniel says that he could talk neither to his church nor his girlfriend because he didn't want to upset them with the bad things he was thinking. Nathaniel shares that he's dating his pastor's daughter, and he tells detectives that he became a born-again Christian a month before the shooting. What made you decide that it was enough? Had you been thinking about this for a while? Yes. Yeah. Wow. How did you get the courage to do it today? Well, I've been thinking about doing a mass murder. This is so stupid. It's not like a stupid thing to say. I'm planning to do a mass murder, man. No way. I don't know. You knew it was wrong. So, what do you think was going to happen? What would be the outcome? I don't know. I didn't. I did. So, why did you shoot those other people? I don't know. Nathaniel doesn't provide much in terms of his own motivations. So, police must look in the place where he documented his ideas. Those two videos Nathaniel recorded only minutes before heading to the library. Hi, I'm Nathaniel Ray Jude, and I was making this because I'm, well, it's about to be zero hour. My thing was when I lost zero. hope or when I just money. couldn't take it anymore is when I was going to do it. It's that time. So I'm about to go NBK, Natural Born Killer. This isn't like, no, Columbine inspired me. It's not that. It's, it's my own thing. Oh, I love you, Dad. Oh, he think he really on, on Call of Duty or something. I'm finna go, what are you saying? It's not that. It's, what? This isn't like, no, but Columbine inspired me. It's not that. It's, this is my own thing. Oh, I love you, Dad. I love you, Mom. I acted alone. This was no one's fault. It's kind of my own. Despite this remark, Nathaniel spreads the blame around claiming that harassment at school culminated in his getting suspended for a fight he didn't start. A cell phone video of the fight tells a different story. Regardless of the fight's details, it's clear that there's much more going on in Nathaniel's head than one schoolyard scuffle. I feel as though there's no other way about this. I have some mental issues going on. It's not like I'm hearing voices or anything. So, do, do, uh, you gotta find what they're doing in school, right? And you decided to go shoot up the school. Not, not, not the school, but the freaking, uh, library, right? But the point is, why you didn't go slide on bruh, if it's that serious? Just go slide off on, on one person, bro. Why you want to slide on everybody, right? I'm angry at the world, and I, I have so much anger, and I can't tell you right. I have so much anger. I'm not so much anger, violence, I'm just saying. Frustration and one just on one hopelessness, it just, this needed to happen. It's probably going to shock a lot of people. No one's ready for this. <laughs> um, I'm really mad. I'm in a really mad mood, and this is kind of for people getting bullied. Cause I was, I'm, I'm blaming. That's one of the big reasons, and just cause I'm sick. <laughs> Nathaniel's ultimate reason behind carrying out a mass shooting is horrifying in its emptiness. Now, why I did this, I, I kind of, I don't know either. I can't really see myself doing anything else. That's it. Thank y'all. Thanks to everyone that was nice to me. And uh, yeah, all right.
just got to... Nathaniel Ray Jewett pled guilty to 30 felony counts, including two charges of first-degree murder for the killing of 61-year-old Wanda Walters and 48-year-old Christina Carter. Four others were wounded in the attack, including 10-year-old Noah Molina, his sister Alexis Molina, library patron Howard Jones, and circulation assistant Jessica Thrawn. On February 15, 2019, roughly 17 months after the shooting, Nathaniel was given two concurrent life sentences plus 40 years. Like, come on, bro. Two current life sentences and then 40 years? <laughs> 